All right, welcome to my lab equipment kind of demonstration um, explanation. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is different ways we can measure liquids. Um, there's various pieces of equipment that we're going to see in the lab this year. Um, the first thing which you're probably familiar with, this is called a beaker. Um, there's various sizes, um, as small as like probably 25 milliliters up to 2 liters. Um, the ones you'll typically see are 400 milliliter and 250 milliliter, um, but essentially this is something that if I ask you to get an approximate, approximate amount of a liquid, water, some other chemical, but typically water, these markings are not real accurate. Okay, so they're just going to give us approximates anyways. Um, notice they change by 50s and there's a line between, so really 25 milliliters would be as accurate as they could be. But these are mass produced, they're fairly cheap, so these lines are not measured or marked to any real high degree of accuracy. All right. So this is just, if you need an approximate amount of a liquid, this would be a great way to get an approximate amount. Another great way to get an approximate amount would be a flask. Um, due to their shape, um, these are quite a bit more expensive, so we won't use these as often. But again, these markings are about, each line represents 25 milliliters, so it's an approximate way, not very exact. Um, what flasks are good for is if I had, a liquid, or if I had a, a liquid and I was dissolving, let's just take water, if I had water in here, and I needed to dissolve some salt, so just make some salt water. I could pour the salt in here, and very easily I could swirl this around without a whole lot of worry about water spilling out the top. With a beaker, that's a whole lot harder to do. Okay, You'd need a stir rod, something to stir with. But if you don't have a stir rod, if you just need to dissolve something really quickly, a flask does that very easily. Um, for other things, um, stoppers can go in flask a lot easier if it's something that needs to be sealed. It's very difficult to find a stopper big enough to fit a beaker. Um, the other two things you should be familiar with from other classes are graduated cylinders. And these are ways that we would measure stuff, not approximately, but specifically. All right. Um, as we look at this one, this is a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Each of these lines represents one milliliter. Um, these are much more expensive than a beaker because they have more or less determined that these are fairly accurate to one, one milliliter apiece. All right. Um, what's even more expensive are typically 10 milliliters. Um, each of these lines represents one-tenth of a milliliter. So if I want an accurate measurement, I'm going to ask you, probably for this, if it's a liquid that takes more than 10 milliliters, if I accurately need 45 milliliters, then you would use a graduated cylinder. But graduated cylinders, if I need a specific amount of liquid, you will use one of these two pieces of equipment. If I need an approximate amount of liquid, you would use a beaker or a flask. Flask less frequently just because of the cost associated with it and beakers you're going to have all the time. The other thing that you'll see liquids in is a test tube and obviously this is a terrible way to get an approximate amount because there's not a marking on this whatsoever. Um, so unless you can eyeball and say this is a milliliter, this is whatever, this is a terrible way to get an approximation um, and certainly not a way to get a specific, a specific reading. So anyways, test tubes aren't really good for measuring whatsoever, just for conducting small experiments. What we're going to look at is um, several different pieces of equipment. Um, and we're going to do an experiment. You'll be doing this later in the year. Uh, but this is a weigh boat. Um, there should never be anything chemical-wise that goes directly on an electronic balance. Um, it might be in a weigh boat. Um, it might be in a beaker, a flask, possibly a graduated cylinder that you would weigh. We're never going to weigh chemicals directly on the scale. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is... Get some chemical, and on a typical lab day, this would be done for you. And essentially, the next piece of equipment we're going to look at is this. It is a crucible, and I am just going to get some chemical into the crucible. like that. And this is just a spatula. Um, this is one way we can get chemicals, transfer chemicals from one place to another. And then um, the next thing is the apparatus I have set up over here. Um, several of those things, these things you're going to see on your quiz. Uh, but this is a ring stand, the big tall thing. Um, this is an iron ring for obvious reasons. It looks like a ring and it's made out of metal. Um, this is a triangle and the triangle is used specifically with a crucible. I'll show you how that works in a second. And um, then we have a Bunsen burner, um, gas, but really just you want to know the names of the equipment. So ring stand, iron ring, this is a triangle, 
and once again, crucible. All right. Next thing, um, we are going to get the burner lit. And really the main thing, um, crucibles, um, they're kind of flat on the bottom, and it's nice if they can kind of get heated a little more evenly, kind of if you go across the bottom. So what we're going to do is, it sets in the triangle like so. So it is used exclusively with the triangle. And now as we put our flame underneath, instead of just heating the bottom of it so that it can all get heated very quickly, we're just going to heat it kind of evenly, and um, we'll kind of see what happens. So you saw I put just crystals in here. I'm not going to show you what the reaction looks like. I'll kind of show you what it looks like at the end. And really that is it as far as procedure goes. So you kind of see what's happening. Again, just kind of even heating so it's not going to heat everything at, at once. If it like it all gets heated at once, there's a chance for it to kind of splatter out on everything. And we'd like to keep that heat and what's going on within our crucible. All right. All right, so welcome back. Uh, I have heated it, the reaction is um, completed. Um, another set of equipment is this. These are called crucible tongs. There's gonna be several different um, tongs that we use in chemistry. These are crucible tongs. Um, they kind of have a little end, it's kind of bent, kind of looks like fingers. I am not gonna wanna touch ceramic that's been heated. Um, ceramic keeps heat um, fairly fairly well. Uh, I won't use the scientific terms for it, but crucible tongs, just use these as an extension of your fingers. You can grab the crucible and safely set it on the counter. Um, as you notice, I just set it directly on the counter. It is burning hot, but these counters are designed um, to be heat resistant, and it's fine just to set the crucible on top. So again, crucible tongs, and um, we've just discussed the other um, kind of names of these things already. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is another setup for heating. And this is, um, again, we have a ring stand, we have an iron ring, but instead of using the triangle, this time we're going to use wire gauze. Um, and essentially the use for wire gauze is it evenly distributes the heat. Um, as soon as I turn the Bunsen burner on, it'll hit the ceramic portion, and it's the white. Um, it'll kind of evenly distribute that. So if we're heating something like water in a beaker, uh, the wire gauze helps to support the weight of the glass and the ceramic is going to help to kind of evenly distribute that heat. Um, I'm going to get it started in heating, and once it's um, heated, um, I'll kind of go over some other pieces of equipment. All right, now there's been heating. Um, we're not quite to boiling yet, but we're just going to see what the next step might be. Um, our next thing, we've looked at a test tube already. Here's the test tube. This is a test tube holder. Um, you just simply squeeze the sides and put your test tube within it. Okay. Um, in this case, I'm going to mix a couple of chemicals. Uh, they happen to be on pipettes this time. And we're going to add them together and then stick them in the water to see what happens when they are heated. And again, this will be a lab you do a little bit later in the year. We simply put them in here and kind of just let it heat. Uh, you can kind of stir it a little bit if you'd like. But really, our glass is hot and our beaker. Our water's um, not quite boiling yet, but fairly warm, and we just want to heat the heat what's in the test tube um, very um, gently. So we're just kind of putting it in the warm water and seeing what happens when we mix these two chemicals. See, we're getting some weird colors in there. It's probably hard to see in the video, but uh, regardless, um, a reaction has taken place. Um, so let's say this is over. Um, you would take this out of the heat, make some observations, um, set it somewhere. And then the next piece of equipment we're going to look at is our other set of tongs. And um, we've already looked at the crucible tongs. They kind of have the point on them. And our next set are called beaker tongs. Um, they have just some rubber on the sides um, just to get a better grip. Uh, but these are beaker tongs. Um, and just as their name implies, this is a hot beaker. Um, it's been sitting above the flame for a while. 
um, and make sure the beaker tongs are wide enough to go around it. You can go just grip the beaker, and again, you can just take it off, set it right on the countertop. Um, it's heat resistant. Um, but again, two sets of beakers that we'll be using beaker tongs, and if you've seen these before, the crucible tongs. All right? This equipment is not on your um, quiz that you're going to be taking. This is a fume hood. Um, we'll use this maybe once throughout the year. We don't use it a whole lot. Um, in AP chemistry, if you take college chemistry, you'll use it a little more often. Um, but if there are chemicals or reactions that make really um, noxious fumes, um, stuff that can burn you, um, that can burn your nose, your nasal, nasal cavities, we typically react them under the fume hood. Um, there is a switch over here. You hear a fan going. That will suck those fumes up and take them out of the building so that you're not exposed to them. Alright, we are back from the fume hood and this is what was cooking. Um, it was a metal and I had some nitric acid. Um, this is called an evaporating dish. Um, Oftentimes we'll have some sort of liquid and we need to get, drive it off. So we are going to, in this case, boil the liquid out. Um, if we had time to wait, we could evaporate the liquid out. But this is an evaporating dish. Um, from time to time, um, this piece of equipment right here is a watch glass. It'll sit on top of it um, just to prevent stuff from coming out. Um, sometimes it's important for us to weigh it um, before and after the water's been driven off. So this is just a way to make sure that um, the solid stays in. Um, whatever evaporates can still come out that little hole. In this case, we're not going to use the evaporating glass uh, or the watch glass. But again, this is a watch glass. It'll be on your um, assignment. And really what we're going to do is um, set the evaporating dish on top. Um, again, we're using the wire gauze, the wire ring, and we're just going to get the heat going. Once again, we're going to heat that up. All right, this has been heating for a little bit. I'm going to try to raise the camera up. And really, the last thing is, this is just a um, glass rod. And too, this is just used to kind of poke at stuff. Usually in the case that we're, when we're evaporating, I'm trying to just break it up and make sure that it kind of get smaller chunks to get whatever liquid is we're trying to get out of there off. You can kind of see gas coming up. That gas, which is why we started this in the fume hood. It's nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, which are big components of smog, which is kind of that yellow color. And thus, if you've ever been in a smoggy city, why it's kind of hazy yellow-orange. So anyways, um, a stir rod is what this is called, um, a glass rod, somewhere along those. Um, and then lastly, what we're going to do is, again, this is not one of the pieces of equipment that you need to know, um, but let's say this was done. It is not complete, but we do have safety gloves, just heat resistant. They are not flame resistant, but again, it should get set on the counter, um, and our black counters are heat resistant always. The last piece of equipment that, we, that you need to see is a utility clamp. Um, this is something that can get attached to the ring stand instead of the iron ring. Um, and this can hold test tubes, um, it can hold syringes, it can hold kind of various things that, that need to be supported um, for either heating purposes. Or so I hope that was beneficial. Um, it was class time. We didn't have to spend going over equipment. Um, you have a quiz to take now in Moodle, and um, just make sure that gets done and completed. Um, feel free, if you need to, to watch the video while the quiz is open. It's not really a quiz grade. It's just one of our um, kind of lab. It will fall in the lab category. Um, but again, thank you for watching. And... I'll see you in class.